If you're looking for a way to limit what people see within your Airtable base, look no further than this video. I'm going to be going into detail about how you can use software to accomplish this very thing based on the logged in user's email address. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, check out our website. I'll include links all over the place. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of this video. We're talking about using software in a way that allows only logged in users to see only those projects that they're connected to. Now, jumping into my screen here, first we have to start with the Airtable database. So I've put together a three table database. We have our team members. So let's take a look at this real quick. Our team members, we have managers and consultants. And inside of our base, you know, we're collecting pictures, uh, their email address and their name. Now, of course, this email address is gonna be a critical part of this whole process, right? So make sure you have this email field or a very similar one to it. And we're gonna use this to basically filter what these folks are connected to. All right, now we also have our clients. So in this case, I put together 12 example clients. Let's actually make these a little bit bigger so that we can see them better. We have a primary email on each of these clients. We have a logo for these clients and, uh, and we have the name of course of the client. So these are the different companies that we are working with in this fake example. And then we've got our campaigns. Now in our campaigns, we're gonna connect all these other pieces together. So we have the client in each campaign that we do. You can think of, in this case, campaign like a project. I'm imagining that we're like an ad, you know, an advertising agency, but you could be any kind of business using these same steps. So we connect to the client. We have different campaign types. Each different, you know, campaign that we run on behalf of a client could be a Google ad campaign, could be a LinkedIn campaign, right? You get the idea. And we have a different manager for each campaign. So here we're linking back to the team members but I've made it so that we're only looking at the managers. So we have a filter on our team members that only lets us pick a manager for this particular connection. And then we're also looking at our consultants and we're saying this is the consultant that's been assigned to this particular project. And again, we're limiting who we're able to connect to here. We can only connect to consultants. We can't connect to managers through this particular link. Now each project also has a start date we have a duration for each one. Then we're able to derive the end date thanks to a little bit of logic. And we also have a time frame here. Now this formula, a little complicated. Feel free to copy and paste it if it's of interest to you. But the basic idea here is we're trying to figure out, is this an, a current project? Or is it a project from the past that's like already done? Or is it an upcoming project? So in essence, what we're doing is saying, look, we're comparing the start date and the end date to today whatever today is, and we're able to derive whether this is a current project, a previous project, or an up and coming project. Now, the other part here is we're bringing in the client email, and I have a couple of other hidden fields too. These are gonna be important to all of this. So let me go ahead and bring them in here. We have a manager email, that would be right here. Now, the manager email, of course, we're looking up to see who the manager is on this project and we're looking up to see what their email address is. Again, this is a really important step because it's gonna be used in the softer back end or front end that we build for this. So it's just a lookup field, look at the manager, bring in the email address. Same thing with consultant here. Look at the consultant that we've linked here, bring in the consultant's email address. We also look up the company logo so this is gonna be useful when we want to display that logo on the actual campaign page itself. And similarly with the client email, if we wanted to use the client email in that display. Okay, enough about the back end structure here. Let's talk about how we put this together in Softer and most specifically, how we're gonna use this new feature about filtering records so that only logged in users see their campaigns, et cetera. So first and foremost, jump into Softer, check out your pages. Now in this example, I have a home page. So looking quick, quickly at the home page, 
This is just the same element duplicated. If you're not logged in, you're gonna see this little logo that says, welcome, go ahead and log in to get started. And then when they click on log in, it takes them to the login page. Now, if they're already logged in on the home page, then they get this option down here. And this says, take me to clients or take me to campaigns. Now, if you're not familiar with how to change this filter so that people see what you want them to see, well, in this case, I'm filtering based on, are you logged in or are you not logged in? So in this case, again, going into this first element, this is for non-logged in users. So in the upper part here, I can click on the eyeball, which is gonna give me my visibility. And I say, look, only non-logged in users see this particular block. Similarly, down for this block, if we look at the eyeball here, only logged in users see this block. So this is kind of the top level visibility. Who can see the block? Logged in, non-logged in, or everyone. And you also get some payment conditions down here too. Maybe you wanna say they bought certain things, but in this case, this is an internal use app, so I'm not worrying about payment. Okay, now on to our you know, next big steps. We have a login page, sure, this is a, an easy thing to put together. This is what you would wanna put in to make sure that each of your users logs in each time. You might also wanna to put together a profile page so they can go in and change their email address or you know, update their profile. But the big pieces here are clients and campaigns. Now for our clients, when I click here, this block here is a list block and we are tapping into our internal use app. That is the Airtable app that we showed earlier in setting this up. And for this particular one, we wanna look at our clients specifically. So we're looking at clients, we can put them in whatever default view we want, we can organize them or sort them in you know, alphabetical order in this case, and we can determine how many show up on the page. Now for me, I wanna make sure that this is only visible to logged in users. That way if somebody else were to find this URL somewhere, I don't want them to log in or not log in and be external to our organization and yet see all of this information about the clients we work with. So I definitely wanna make sure to make this visible only to logged in users. Now, lastly here, we can set up additional conditions. Now for this particular case, I don't care if my team members see all of the clients or not. I want my team members to be able to reach out to any of our clients and I'm not going to restrict their visibility to clients. So this stops here. But on our next point, when we go into campaigns, I want my team members to only see those campaigns that apply to them. So let's take a look at how we do that. Let's flip over into our campaigns now. And again, we have to stop or start at the highest level. So now that we have our campaigns, here we have just really quickly a couple things. If you see, we have brought in all the different campaigns that we're working on. And this is done again in a list block. So this is another list block that I've added over here from the blocks on the left-hand side. And I just choose a list block type from these different options here. And I'm able to bring in the company logo. As we talked about, this is something I'm looking up at the campaign level. And I bring in the name of the campaign. And I'm also bringing in whether it's a previous, current, or upcoming campaign. And also what type of campaign it is. Is this a Facebook campaign, a, a YouTube campaign, etc.? So once we have all of that kind of mapped out, then the fun stuff comes in. Now, first I need to talk about visibility. So who can see this block? Is this for everyone, logged in or non-logged in users? In this case, I want it only to be logged in users. So I better make sure to save logged in users only. Now, I don't want people to be cluttered up with everyone else's campaigns. When my consultants or managers log into this app, I don't want them to see stuff that they're not working on. It's just gonna get in their way and slow them down. So let's filter. We can build conditional filters. So after working on the block visibility, which is really that high level stuff, now I come into my conditional filters. In this case, I can say, I want to show this list item only in the case where the consultant's email, remember this is the field in Airtable, is, matches the logged in user's email. So of course, we've already set up a rule that the person must be logged in. And now we're saying, whatever that user email is, who's logged in on this, we only want them to see 
those campaigns that belong to either their match their consultant email or match the manager email. And this or is another important thing to bring up. This can be any of these conditions or all of these conditions. So were it all of these conditions, it would require that everybody has both the consultant email and manager email in order to see this. But of course, in my case, I want it to be any. That way a manager can log in and see their projects or campaigns, and a consultant can similarly log in and see their projects or campaigns. Pretty cool stuff. And then the last part here is my inline filters. Now the difference between the conditional filters here and the inline filters here, conditional filter is going to allow people to only see certain things based on their email address or other criteria. But the inline filters allow people to further filter the data that's showing up on their screen. So in this case, if somebody wants to look only at Facebook ad campaigns, that's handled in the inline filters. So first and foremost, they're only gonna see those campaigns that they are a part of, but secondarily, they can filter that to only show Google ad campaigns, or perhaps they wanna look at the uh, time frame. Maybe they wanna look at previous campaigns or upcoming campaigns so they can plan for vacation. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, we give them these inline filters as well so that they can further filter this. Okay, so now that this is all said and done, let's publish this and take it out for a spin just to explore it. Now, before I go on though, I do wanna make sure that I've checked my data and the data, if you're not familiar, is where it's going to store the uh, users inside of your app. So if you need to add new users to this app, you can simply come up here, make sure you are not in test data, toggle that off and add users. And you can create a, a really quick uh, password for them as well. So let's say I'm ready to add new users here and I'll go over to my team members and I'll grab Sandra. I've got Sandra's name and email address here. So I'll go back into software, I'll add a user and here's her name. And here's her email address and I'm gonna give her a password and I'll make this really easy just to you know, get logged in, making it one, two, three, four, five, six. So now Sandra can log in with that information. She can go in and change her password if she wants. So let's suppose that we're now ready to take this out for a spin and we want to impersonate Sandra so that we can see what she sees when she accesses the app. Let's go ahead and publish this and we can go to this subdomain. If we wanted to create our own subdomain, that is, a premium feature that software allows as well. I'm gonna go ahead and open this in an incognito window. And first I have to log in, right? So we see the non-logged in uh, page here. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in, copy and paste Sandra's email. And of course we gave her a very difficult password of one, two, three, four, five, six. We can go ahead and sign in and we can go to clients. And this is exactly what Sandra's gonna see when she is accessing the app. So if she were to come in here, she would get this very view and she can search in the search bar and access this. Now let's suppose instead Sandra wants to go to campaigns and she wants to see the campaigns that she is a part of, not all of the campaigns that the company is running. When she clicks go to campaign, we see that she only has the visibility here of two campaigns two upcoming campaigns, one for Toyota, it's a Facebook ad campaign, and one for MGM Studios, a Google ad campaign. She can use these filters, so if she wants to look at only the Google ad campaigns, instantly filtered for her, or if she wants to look only for the upcoming, of course they're both upcoming, so it doesn't change anything, but this is how she is getting access only to her things. Now the part that makes this so incredible is that previously, if you were to try to build this directly into Airtable itself, in that case, if we were to go back to Airtable, we would have to create a view for Sandra directly in our Airtable base. And so we would need to come in and create a grid view, call this Sandra's view, and we would need to apply filters here inside of Airtable that say only certain conditions must be met. But the beauty of this is we don't need Sandra to even be a user in the Airtable database now. We don't need to share any views. We don't need to create any views. That's a very manual process. 
The nice thing about this is we don't have to worry about doing it inside of Airtable. Instead, we can just publish this softer app that we built, send Sandra there and make sure that she logs in directly there. And it's only going to show her her relevant campaigns. Let me know in the comments below what different ways you're using these new cool filter systems, especially when it comes to logged in users. I look forward to hearing from you. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.